Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to react to my own video from four years ago called Why I'm Worried About Blazor and Its Future. Now this video came out at a time where I was way way smaller of a channel and I couldn't really deal with criticism that well. You have to understand Blazor was extremely fresh at the time as well. So when this video came out, it got so much backlash that I was sort of forced to take it down. Now, I think if I made this video nowadays, I wouldn't have taken it down. And obviously I'm going to react to it. So I'm not really ashamed or worried or anything, but I really want to see how this video has aged because another YouTuber called Ed Anderson actually made a video on Donald Conf mentioning this video because he watched and he liked it. So I want to see, was I right? How has this video aged? Now, Jesus Christ, have I aged finally. Now, let's see. Hello, everybody. I'm Nick, and this video I want to talk to you about why I'm a bit worried about Blazor and its future. By the way, this must have been one of my first, like, sensationalized titles and that drove many many clicks at the time the seven and a half thousand views that this video got on launch which was taken down after like a few hours was crazy before i dive into my take and my concerns and my advice mm -hmm. uh, i want to say that i absolutely love blazers of course you have to get a bit defensive <laughs> model i think it's amazing i mean it is biting off the already popular um projects and the way they play but I think I'm referring to React here, and I totally agree to this day. Like, the model is very easy to understand and very easy to work with, and I still it's like it. It's a safe strategy and a safe way to approach something new. Take something that's popular. And this, by the way, still happens. I'm going to say, I'm assuming, I haven't watched this video since I published it, but popular, adapt it to your own. Yeah, take something that's popular, adapt it, and then make it better. It's like the Apple thing, but in the uh, Microsoft developer world. Um, I still agree with that. Microsoft did the same with Aspire. Aspire is not a new concept. Like Spring in Java had it for like a very, very long time. It's basically the same thing. Microsoft keeps doing this. Own technology stack and popularize this. Um, the problem is the way it's being pushed and the way it's being hosted. So I want to talk a little bit about that and then give my advice to Microsoft in, in terms of what I think they can do to actually make something out of Blazor. Because yeah, I do still believe that the hosting model with the whole SignalR thing silos a lot of the developers and like sort of puts you into an Azure camp because no other service, as far as I'm aware, offers a managed SignalR like service on the cloud. I wouldn't want it to die. I would want it to be repurposed or focused somewhere else, but dying, definitely not. So let's talk about how I'm using Blazor because I am actually using Blazor a lot. I am not really using it anymore. I think I have one more website that is using Blazor. And that is if you're a patron and you want to get the source code of my videos, that is still driven from Blazor WebAssembly. But the rest I have basically stopped using because even the use case I had, which is building like desktop applications and then wrapping them into an Electron shell, I don't really do that anymore. So I don't really use Blazor. And I haven't dealt with the MAUI, like or Blazor Hybrid or WPF, WinForms stuff, like at all. So this has changed. But at the time I was genuinely using it and really, really enjoying playing around with it, especially Blazor Server. I'm using it a lot for personal projects. So if I want to do rapid prototyping or yeah. to test how something feels to use, I will use Blazor for that. I'm actually going to use the server side approach for it. Yeah. I'm also going to use the server side approach to make desktop applications wrapped with Electron. I did that a lot of the time. Shape that as a desktop app that's running web technologies behind the scenes and it's fully written in C sharp. And the, the other thing, thing I'm using it for is for the mobile bindings, just playing around with. Yeah, at the time, the whole mobile bindings thing had been demoed. We didn't have like Maui or any of that at the time. And that was like very revolutionary to me. I was very interested. Obviously, now you have Blazor and in, in Maui and all of that. And that's like fantastic. But at the time, it looked like it's that. I really hope that actually becomes a product it did. that we get to use because I think it's amazing. I'm not, however, using it in production in any capacity. And I yeah. don't feel... I mean, technically I did, you know, the whole Patreon thing, um, I was using it. And in fact, like a bit of a, a fun fact, first and foremost, we have a Black Friday discount on DomeTrain.com until the 2nd of December. You can use discount code Black Friday 24 and get 40% off any course, any bundle or DomeTrain Pro. We give you access to all of our courses. We have a Blazor course as well. And the interesting thing is that the Blazor course has sold extremely well and it's one of our most watched courses. I think it's like top three most watched courses. So clearly... There is a market for it. Clearly, people are using it and learning it and employers say, go and learn how to do this because we're going to use it. So 
at least from what I see as a provider of you know, learning, there is a demand for it. And of course, there's going to be supply for that reason. I think what's going to happen is more big, massive companies will use it or potentially use it. And that's the majority of the use case. But it's not a thing that smaller companies will pick up and use. Confident uh, recommending anybody to use it as well, even though Microsoft... And by the way, we are going to come out with a deep dive as well on Blazor. There's clearly a massive demand on it. It's already doing so. I have my own concerns and I have my own criteria of things that I think a piece of technology should follow for it to be production ready. Yes, technically it won't crash and it will run, yeah. but that's not enough for me to say that something is production ready. Something very interesting is I really like reading this blog by uh, Steve Gisell. Oh, sorry, Steven Gisell. Is, is this one over here? And I think this website is actually written in Blazor. And what happens sometimes is as I'm reading a blog, and I put it on another tab and then I go back, you get to the, this page has failed, like working, um, you want to reload this page or like, you know, the error banner, which is like, it's not a great experience if I just leave this tab for like two hours and then I go back and it's suddenly like completely crashed. Like, I believe this shouldn't happen. I'm assuming some service is timing out and that's why it's happening, but not a great experience with Blazor server side. When it comes to my concerns, the first one I have is that Blazor wasn't made to really solve a problem. Based. This guy is so right. I still believe that. I think Blazor was made because Steve Sanderson can basically do whatever he wants and will practically become a product. This is not something on Steve. It is just he's so smart and his brain is just so ahead of everyone else's that he'll come up with those things that there might not be a market yet for it. But Microsoft will bug him up, which is like, it's great that this is happening. But I don't think necessarily that it solved a problem we have. I mean, yeah, Microsoft and .NET did not have a reactive UI framework in the same way that Angular or React had at the time. And Microsoft kind of felt that they needed to make something out of it. Now, Google didn't make it in Go, even though they had the language. And Facebook didn't make it in Hack or whatever other language they have invented. So they used TypeScript and JavaScript at the time, but Microsoft decided, no, let's just use like our own C Sharp thing because C Sharp has to do everything. And I don't agree with that. I think when you're trying to be a generalist language, you're going to be average on everything, not excellent on one thing. If anything, Microsoft needs to start focusing .NET and C Sharp to do less things better. That's weird to say, but think about it. Facebook already wanted a reactive True. UI and they made React. True. Google wanted the same and they made Angular in a different way, but still the same idea behind it. I can't believe this video got backlash. Like, I think I'm just saying the obvious here. Um, it's just how opinionated the two technologies are. React was used by Facebook before it was open source. The reason they... It makes a huge, huge difference to see a company open sourcing their own internally used tools. You know, even Kubernetes, Google had their own thing, I can't remember the name, um, that was basically a Kubernetes thing. They still use it internally, I'm pretty sure, they don't use Kubernetes. Uh, but then they made Kubernetes out of it and they open sourced it and, you know, the React was used internally and they open sourced it and they get all this feedback as well as it gets open sourced. open sourced it, other than just, it makes a company look better if they open source the yeah. tech, is that they can have all of us doing bug fixing and bug testing um, for their technology. Which is what happens with TypeScript and what happens as well with Visual Studio Code, by the way. And since they're using it, they're getting all these free and .NET free updates. It's an amazing, brilliant um, model if you think about it. So they had the problem, they solved it initially and then they open sourced it. Microsoft isn't really using Blazor. I mean, you can... And I still don't know any high profile things. I know the dashboard in Aspire is Blazor, but I don't necessarily know any high profile. And if you ask, by the way, Microsoft they will say, oh, we have these massive contracts. We can't tell you because of privacy reasons who's using it. It's like, okay, it might as well be no one is using it then, you know? And probably say, yes, they're using it for that very small part of something. <laughs> But the Microsoft website isn't written in Blazor. Yep. The docs aren't written in Blazor. Nope. There are so many things that are not written in Blazor. And I could be wrong for some of them. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But yep. I think that nothing major is actually using Blazor. I think that's still the case. I could be wrong, but I haven't seen... Because Microsoft on their Blazor page, like, wouldn't it be amazing here to, like, advertise who's using Blazor? I haven't seen anything. I mean, you can see, like, the, the ecosystem and all the 
providers and, and vendors of components, but I don't see a who's using Blazor page. That would be a great like marketing for this from Microsoft. It's a very much a monkey see, monkey do situation where <laughs> I'm seeing the company is using it. I feel comfortable using it. Yeah. This guy is so right, you guys. If I don't see, if Facebook wasn't using React, I don't think that people would use React. Yeah, if true. Google wasn't using Angular, I don't think that people would use Angular. Didn't Google start to use like React internally for some things and maybe publicly as well? Like I think they stopped using Angular for some things. I could be wrong, but I remember reading about this. And it's the reason why people are going away from React Native as well is because Facebook isn't really using it much anymore. At least that's the last thing that I've read. And if the person who made the thing isn't using the thing, then why should you? So true. It feels like they're not feeling confident enough. It's nice pushing like to-do apps and pizza stores and weather apps, but these are not really real use cases. I mean, they're trying. If I have made this video nowadays, I would have never deleted it. It would slap. It would get so many views. It's crazy. Trying to a, like follow a real use case and they kind of do that. But tell me how much would this do with like 400 RPS or 1000 RPS without being on a very beefy machine with Signal R uh, backing it up. That's for the server side approach or tell me what the compatibility and the performance is for a web assembly and tell me how the SEO is for that same web assembly application. It's, it's that sort of thing that makes you not really feel confident about it. I think it also picked uh, the wrong fight in a sense, because for me, JavaScript sits like here and you see, so I sound smarter back in the day than I sound now. This is crazy. I was. Jesus, leave a comment down below if you think up until here, if you agree with what I'm saying in this video, because I think the opinions are pretty based. It was just a, a smaller language, not specialized to that big thing. You can take JavaScript and use it everywhere on the web. You cannot take C Sharp and use it everywhere on the web. Yeah. So your talent pool is already smaller. And if you were to use it in production and you want to hire for it, it would be really, really hard to hire for it. And you'd probably have to pay a lot as well because the talent pool is smaller. That's why Perl jobs go for like a lot of money as opposed to like a C sharp job which paid less. I have nothing to add. If I am silent, I just silently agree. Like I think I'm right on those things. I think also the tech being used behind them in one scenario is probably a bad idea. And in the other, it's a bit ahead of its time. I, still I do think believe that, that WebAssembly is the one that is ahead of its time. I think it's still very much I don't think it wasn't that stable back in the day. So I think that's why I'm critical of it. Like the whole WebAssembly thing, it came later. Um, it came a bit half assed Authentication still with it is a bit weird. And I think that is still the case. I think still WebAssembly is pretty niche. It's in its first generation, even though it's been around for a while. And I think it will take a bit before it says wider adoption. On the server side side of things, the need of having a signal R connection makes you needs to use Azure for that connection. Yeah. And if a company cannot go multi-cloud, if they're already in G. That is true. And I think more cloud providers have started picking that one up because there's clearly a market. And I think that will expand in the future, in the near future, actually. CP or um, AWS, then they basically cannot use it. So you eliminate these two other big cloud providers um, because you need them to use your SignalR connection. I do think that the product itself is great. And again, the way it codes is yeah. amazing. It, it feels very nice to use Blazor. I have to give it that. I mean, it's a nice programming model. But I'm also writing React and I yeah. never would have thought. By the way, Dome Train doesn't use Blazor anywhere. Not in the UI, not like anywhere. We use different technologies for those things. Just because I think there's better tools to use if you're happy to not write C sharp and I don't only write C sharp. So I've picked the right tool for the right job, not the one that's necessarily convenient because the programmers I have already write C sharp. I don't care about learning new programming languages. Even Amihai, an author we have on Domtrain, another YouTuber, he learned Swift, even though he could use Maui to make his desktop application product because you can just generally build a better product. And I still don't think like this, that I will take my React code and make it Blazor C Sharp just because it's the same language. Yeah. I'm 
inclined to use the right tool for the right job. And I don't think that Blazor is the right tool for most of the jobs I already use React for. And there's this weird situation where who is Microsoft really advertising to? Because yeah. there is no C sharp. Clearly, these C sharp developers that have been using like MVC or Razor Pages, which by the way, Razor Pages, I love. I think they're an amazing product and probably underappreciated as well. And I think that's where they're trying to advertise to us and potentially all the web forms people. So I get it now who they're advertising to. .NET developer alive that doesn't know that Blazor is a thing. Yeah. So if you wanted to use Blazor as a C Sharp developer, you would already do so. Yeah. Microsoft doesn't need to push it any further. Everybody knows. And they don't, by the way. In the latest .NET Conf, they only mentioned it like six times. And if you watched .NET Conf, there was like no Blazor section. Like at all. Maui was mentioned more than Blazor because well, I don't know why I'm assuming Microsoft has more contracts with Maui or more relationships with companies using Maui. I don't know. But I was about it. It's pretty odd. What they should push is I have React or Angular or Vue. Why should I go away from that to C Sharp and Blazor? So right. And the problem is that it's more likely for a C Sharp engineer to go to JS because then they can work with all of these other technologies True. than a JS engineer to move to C-sharp to only limit themselves <laughs> in one specific category. And this is where my suggestion comes in. I think that I even provided feedback. Why did people get mad? Blazor shouldn't really be focused too much on the web. It should be focused on the web with an um, asterisk. And by that, I mean, focus on making an, a good electron-like shell to provide a cross-platform way to build desktop apps. Which they kind of did with WebView 2, I think, at the time. So I was right. Apps backed by Blazor, because I think that would be amazing. And focus on making an alternative for Xamarin, which I think they already do with Maui, that uses Blazor, oh, Maui was or out the Blazor the developer model behind the scenes, oh, like the experimental bindings on. that are already out. Because I can see wider adoption there. People might not want to learn Java and Kotlin or Swift and Objective-C. And these are smaller slices in this huge yeah. tree of languages where JS is at the top. So it's probably more likely that you're going to win that than the web. So maybe focus on that. And also use it more for your own things and yeah. talk about it. We're using demos go, go a long way, but Microsoft has historically had a problem with demos as well. They look really ugly. Like get the designer and get the apps to look really, really like brand spanking new, very, very fancy. I don't think anything from Microsoft looks particularly fancy and like attractive in the demo. Using it for this, we're using it for that. This is built on it. People will trust it more when you say that you use it more than you do already. Last but not least, I do think that it will replace WinForms and WPF. It kind of is being on the is being worked on it because the support for WPF and WinForms that you can use now with Blazor. So it's again, I was right. If if you make an alternative if, Electron if, thing or even Electron itself, where Blazor runs through that to create yeah. desktop apps, because the latency of the server side model doesn't matter there. So the server side model is an absolute win. I still on agree that with that spec. That's all I had for you. For yeah, okay. So I, I was right. I think everything I mentioned has kind of come true four years later. And I'm going to actually publish this video now. I didn't know if I'm going to or not because this might have aged really badly. But I think this has aged really, really well. And I'd like to know from you in the comments, what do you think about this topic? For me, Blazor clearly has a place and it's clearly like demanded, like we get the deep dive course requests so, so much. You have no idea. And the Blazor course is doing like insanely well. So clearly people are using it, but it's one of those things that Microsoft build and push people to use without necessarily using it themselves at scale, I'm assuming. I don't know. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you use Blazor at production, at work, please, please, please let me know. I'd really like to know your thoughts on this. Now that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.